happened to talk rugby here now on, on Highland Radio. On this week, Letter Kenny Rugby Club appointed uh, a new coach as we welcome Paul O'Kane to the airwaves in the Northwest. Uh, Paul, a very good afternoon. How's things, Oshin? I'm good, Paul. I know you for over 20 years, me and your old school buddies. I decided to talk about sport. You decided to go coaching it, uh, so you did, and, and you've been coaching successfully uh, over the last number of years. Lamavati to a, a Gordon West and to a league title. You then coached Durban, and after that, you took on the big job at, at City of Derry, where you brought the club from the brink of uh, going down to junior rugby to being competitive again. In, in the All Ireland series, maybe before we talk about Letter Kenny Paul, uh, you might give us a, sort of a, a background as to, to how things panned out for you in City of Derry and, and how much effort and work it took from you and your coaching team to get them back up being competitive in All Ireland League again. I listen, City of Derry was an opportunity at the time I couldn't refuse. Um, I kind of similar to Letter Kenny now. I seen the potential that existed within uh, City of Derry and the. The wider uh, dairy city area uh, to grow the sport, uh, so the the fact they were struggling wasn't a massive draw uh, drawback for me. I was really excited about what could be done. Uh, so as I say, we, we stabilised the club. They were they were hemorrhaging players. They weren't able to field at second, third team level, uh, and obviously they were getting uh, a fair few hard days at the first team level. They were I think they were the only club ever in AIL status not to be able to field at first team level. So. It was a, a fairly big task, but myself and the, the likes of Richie McCarter and Joey Gallon at that time, uh, they, they, they all really bought into it. Um, and, and we've started to, to, to turn the wheels uh, around, obviously. Um, we we were able to get a very competitive squad uh, gathered up. We were able to get numbers back in the locality and guys re engaged with rugby again. So we went from struggling uh, with competing at first team level and even feeling the side, we went to having a, a good mid-table competitive side in, in all Ireland League rugby, uh, as well as a second team that was able to win their league and a third team that won the, the Butler Shield. So it was a, a, a fantastic season. Uh, there was good success with the, the ladies' end of things as well. They reached the Junior Cup final. Um, the, the underage was, was, was really starting to, to tick again. They had a very strong under-18 squad. Uh, so it was it was all pretty positive. The second year, we we hemorrhaged. Uh, well, we didn't hemorrhage. A few bigger clubs came, and uh, obviously that's the uh, a victim of success. As people want to take their players to higher levels, so we lost a few guys, including uh, Letter Kenny's Connor McManaman. We lost him to to Malone, uh, which was, was disappointing. Lost Rory McGinty and all Letter Kenny lad up to Queens, uh, but we were able to again be a real competitive force at first team level. Uh, we were able to. Again, push on. We were hoping going into the last four games before the the COVID uh, kicked in that we were hoping to sort of get into those playoff spots uh, to, to have a chance of getting into 2B. Unfortunately, we didn't have that opportunity. Uh, but as I say, again, we had a strong strong side at second team level. We were able to finish. I think they were in the top floor, top four before the, the season uh, just fizzled out. And the third team were up the top end of their league as well. And the under 18s had won their league that year. So, again, it was all all pretty positive. Unfortunately, then COVID came in and there was a... I think we only got to play two games this year in pre-season. And it's been a lot of a lot of hard time and work behind the scenes trying to just keep it alive in some shape, form or fashion. Um, regards any sort of training opportunities that we had together or games or just trying to keep that squad together which uh, I think we've we've done fairly successfully um, lost a few guys here or there but uh, I'm handing it over to, to Richard McCarter who's a, a fantastic coach and a great lad uh, and, and pretty good Nick um, I thought that the the time was right for a bit of a change um, like every club you have different uh, different areas where you don't agree on uh, and I thought that's what it really needed. I thought there needed to be a bit of a, a fresh impetus put on in tandem with the committee uh, to, to overcome some of those obstacles. Uh, so, as I say, that's what probably led me to taking the, the opportunity with Letter Kenny. I had a, an opportunity to go to Sligo, but uh, Letter Kenny definitely has whet the appetite again to, to grow something. Yeah, why Letter Kenny? What what was the appetite there? What's what's on the table on the table for you, Paul? Rugby wise, how how are you going to bring this club on? Well, like I'm a huge 
Northwest rugby enthusiast to begin with. Um, it's it's where I'm from, and like I've always seen the potential that exists within Leather Kenny. Uh, if you speak with anyone within Ulster rugby, the development coaches, they'll all tell you the the potential that exists there. I know, even getting guys on the to Saudi Derry uh, over the past few years, the, the Conor McMenamins, the Ruin McGinty, the Ben McGarvey's. Uh, like there's so much potential that comes out of, of, of Letter Kenny and the wider Donegal area, Fun Valley, etc. And I think it's time that, that and I think that's what Letter Kenny have seen. It's time that the opportunities were created on their doorstep, that they didn't have to go away for those opportunities. And it's time that we find solutions to all the, the problems. The, the guys that are maybe having to travel from university will, will shift train on a Friday evening. Uh, there's going to be a, a, a proper uh, set up in place. There's been good coaches in Letter County before, but maybe they hadn't the support or resources around them. Um, so, myself, along with Alistair Ferguson, who's a fantastically talented coach, uh, there's also going to be a, a strength and conditioning coach attached with the club, which is a, a huge aspect of the game now uh, that you've got to look after, especially getting the, the guys transitioning from uh, youth rugby into senior rugby. It's a it's a different ball game being an eighteen year old and playing against your own age to run against a a thirty year old ball of a man. Uh, so there's there's a lot of help and support that we have to give these guys as a club to make them feel part of things and and really start to bring their potential to fruition. Really, uh, and that's what to be honest, that's what excites me when you look at the facilities that Letter Kenny have their top drawer. Uh, we were down there last night and. Like you, you only have to look at the the clubhouse, the the, the pitches. And the, the room around there, they actually grow as well uh, to know that it's, it's a bit of hard work and a bit of togetherness and hopefully we can hopefully we can achieve some good things. Yeah, you done it in the first year of your three-year term at City of Derry. You were able to, to turn things around. Um, where do you want to be at the end of year one with Letter Kenny, Paul? End of year one with Letter Kenny, a lot of it will dicta be dictated by who we can re-engage squad-wise. Uh, I've been... Probably over the past few days, I think uh, I messaged around 60 people um, the other day. Uh, guys that had walked away from the club or, or had stopped playing rugby for one reason or another. Uh, we want to try and re-engage with some of the, the, the talent that, that it has existed that doesn't really play much rugby at the moment. The, the Daniel Faulkners, the, the Peter Scott, the Ben Scotts. Like there, there's a host of names that we want to try and get through and try and re-engage them into the club. When we see what quality that we have. Uh, the guy genuinely feels there's natural potential there to, to finish in the top four this year at least. Uh, you would love to drive forward under that playoff position of the top two, even first year, and have a successful run in the Gordon West Cup. Uh, depending on what talent I'm able to re-engage uh, and tandem with what's already there, because the guys forget there's some fantastic talent there already, like Christy Gimas and Davy Ward and Davy Brown, those kind of stalwart players, Andrew Gibson, like those guys could and all could have played at a much higher level than they have. So there, there is a spine that exists within Letter Kenny. It's about now creating opportunities for those young guys coming through and seeing what talent we can pull into there. And obviously, what talent we don't have, we're going to look to solutions for that. So we will recruit and we'll we'll find answers to that in the local area by by trying to attract guys from other clubs. Uh, and to what I see is. As a club that's only going to go one way to be honest uh, it's it's built to grow and, and that's what i intend to drive yeah you mentioned about players that have moved on to play with various other all Ireland league clubs uh, paul that, that's come out of the letter kenny uh, academy um is your purpose with that type of player now going forward to keep them in letter kenny or do you still have to evolve them and let them go play at a, a, with a bigger club and, and, and at a bigger level and that probably all all bodes well down the line for the club again. So how do you find the happy medium between all that? To be honest, I think you've got to aspire to keep your own talent. And and that's certainly the aspiration within the club now is that Letter Kenny probably hasn't created the, the opportunities for them. They haven't had that support, but now they are going to have that support. So if we want to grow through the leagues, there's minimal differences level-wise through all the leagues, to be honest, especially from Q2 up to Q1 and the AIL. There, there's small differences and there's there's small things that can make a massive difference in regards to your squad. It's about building squad depth. So our aspiration is that we are going to make sure that we retain up to around 85, 90% of our under-18s coming through now. I think we've got to do that. And 
the mentality of hemorrhaging our best talent out to the other clubs has got to go uh, and it's part of the mentality that I certainly will be bringing uh, as I say with a setup that we're going to have in place we're, the, the guys are going to have the same opportunity to evolve uh, as they would at an earlier league club um, with the, the experience that I have in Alistair and as I say with the, the medical support from a physiotherapist uh, that we'll have for the guys the S&C provision uh, to be honest we, we, we definitely don't want to see the guys seeing that there's better opportunities outside. Uh, we want to see the opportunities being created from within. Um, now that, as I say, there's been a, a fairly good start to that made by, the, I think there's nine, nine of the, the under-18 team that are coming out to this year. Uh, there's six of them that have already committed uh, to playing their, their rugby within Letter Kenny next year. Now there's a, there's a couple that may be lost who are going down to Limerick to study, and that's, that's fair enough. But even... Galway, Dublin, Belfast, we will look and strive to keep those guys on board now. Uh, and we'll only get stronger as we grow. A, a, a huge part of what we're trying to do at first team level is is going to happen below that. Uh, like we, we will, by hook or by crook, have a development team up and running this year. Uh, that's a, It's a place for guys who, in the letter can area, maybe have walked away, maybe guys from a Gaelic background or another sporting background that want an opportunity to play. Uh, the sport, but need to learn the sport. Uh, so, and as I say, the, those under eighteen guys are maybe physically just not ready for senior rugby yet at first team level. We've got to create those opportunities below. So, we're going to have a development team up and running again, uh, which which is hugely important. Uh, Rory McGonagall is going to get involved with the coaching end of that, but primarily, I will also look after that that team as well. With the numbers that are coming out. In the next year at, at under 18 level, like with 22 guys coming out uh, at under 18 level, like aspiration wise, like we should be genuinely looking to be producing probably as a minimum two sides, but hopefully aiming towards three sides over the next two, three years. I think we've, like we've got to grow those opportunities and pathways within the club. So uh, I definitely don't want to be losing our, our best talent uh, from now on. Yeah. Just finally, then, um, I know. I know as well you're director of, of rugby at, at Foyle College and, and things have been developing at a fantastic rate there for you as well, Paul. But on, on the letter Kenny front, you mentioned that there's not much right through the leagues and Ulster qualifying. Realistically, how far is Letter Kenny away from playing either Ulster Senior League rugby or, or AIL? I think you're you're probably five years away from uh probably making a decision on that and that's probably what the, the club have actually seen themselves uh, they want to get real stability in the club I have committed to a five year contract uh, so I see that it's going to take time the committee know that it's going to take time but in five years time we will with the, the crop of youngsters that are coming through and hopefully re-engaging some of the talent that, that has been lost and guys moving home uh, over the next few years I would like to think that we're if not very stable in, in Q2, we will be up in Q1. That's the aim. And once you're there, you only have to look at the likes of, of Oma, uh, who I would have played against or coached against as well in, in Q2. They went from Q2 into Q1 and straight up into 2C uh, and, and the all Ireland League. So that's how, once you get the squad gathered and you get the depth right, that's how easily it can happen. Uh, or not easily is maybe the word, but that when you put in the work and the hard yards and you grow that depth, uh, it can it's it is those small minimal differences and getting that togetherness uh, and making sure that you hold on and maintain your talent and getting everyone bought into driving a real new culture with them later, Kenny. Like it can happen that quickly. Uh, and as, as I say, I think chatting to the one thing that I've picked up from every single lad that I've spoke with letter kenny ways is there's a real drive and enthusiasm they have top level rugby in the letter kenny area they want to, they see it as their home club they want to see success at their home club and that there will take you a, a fair bit of the way alone so it's just creating the opportunities for those guys and helping them along the way okay listen we'll watch with a lot of interest paul O'Kean, many thanks for talking to us today and the very best of luck um ahead in the future with your role in letter kenny that's great thanks so much you know,